Gaming Vault presents 15 Most Crazy, Creative, and Insane Piracy Punishments in Video Games. Developers are always looking at new ways to protect the games they make, and also make sure that they don't lose money while pirates and hackers steal their game and much of their hard work. As gaming has evolved over the years, so has the DRM methods to try and make the pirates' lives difficult. Developers from the smaller to the bigger companies have come up with the most innovative and amusing methods to really deter pirates from cracking their games. From the crazy to the inventive to the outright insane, here are some of the most creative ways developers try to stop people from stealing their games. And it goes without saying, always buy original games. Far Cry 4 I'm sure many of you heard what Ubisoft did to deter gamers from pirating Far Cry 4. Granted that it's not an extreme measure, but it's a significant one nevertheless. Far Cry 4 PC had an FOV slider that got added to the game in the day one patch it had. Now the main problem with this patch is that all of those who pirated the game simply weren't able to get it, causing them to just start reporting the issue. However, the developers answered with this response. PC players, if you're online complaining about the lack of FOV control, you pirated the game. Serious Sam 3 Those of you who played Serious Sam games would know that while the game is awesome, it does have its own level of insane difficulties. The developers wanted to do something different to counter those who pirated their game. The developers decided to punish pirates by integrating the game with a terrifying boss monster, a scorpion-like creature that would move at incredible speeds and can never be killed. The player could dodge and counter his attacks, but whenever they least expected it, the monster would always be there just waiting to take a stab at the player. Batman Arkham Asylum the developers of Batman Arkham Asylum had a rather clever way of making sure they discouraged anyone thinking of pirating their game. Instead of putting any online DRM, the developers made sure that anyone playing the game would notice that a critical element in the game would be disabled, and that was the gliding. And to the people who complained, Rocksteady had a strong response. It's not a bug in the game's code, it's a bug in your moral code. Very clever indeed, Rocksteady. Game Dev Tycoon this anti-piracy punishment is quite hilarious if not ironic. Pirates who were playing the game would find that their game would start losing tons and tons of profits to piracy. The problem worsens until the studio inevitably fails. Quite ironic, wouldn't you say? Quantum Break I wasn't a fan of Quantum Break, but I guess there were people around the world who wanted to play this game so bad that they felt the need to pirate it. Those who pirated the game would notice that the game's main character looks rather different. Now, the developer didn't make the game unplayable or anything, but rather if the game detects it has been pirated, it continues running properly, but with a glitch. The game adds an eye patch to the character. Michael Jackson The Experience Granted that this game is not the most sought after, but people who pirated the game were in for a surprise. Because not only did they not hear any of the Michael Jackson songs, but hilariously, when the game ROM detects that it's been pirated, it plays Vuvuzela noises all over the music tracks. Skullgirls Skullgirls combated piracy with a dash of humor to the mix. If you've progressed far enough into the game, a pop-up window comes up that reads, What is the square root of a fish? Now I'm sad. This message only appears to players who have pirated the game. The player can then simply click out of the pop-up. Or if you're this one guy who tweeted this so-called error, and the developer tweeted right back and stated, Oh that? It means you should probably buy the game instead of pirate it. Oh snap. Prince of Persia Who can ever forget the original Prince of Persia game, which sent waves across the games industry for its originality and awesomeness? Of course, being a popular game also meant that pirates would want to play it for free, and so the developer came up with a way to combat piracy. There was a room near the beginning of the game filled with potions, and each potion had a discernible letter, and a message at the bottom of the screen which mentioned a word, line, and page indicating the location of a letter in the game's original manual. Players who entered the right letter would have his character drink the potion, which would only replenish his health. However, if he entered the wrong code, the player will be poisoned and has to restart the game. This will go on until a legit copy was bought. Internet wasn't very popular back then, so searching for the answers to the codes wasn't a viable option. The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings CD Projekt Red has developed the best games, and they always listen to what their fans and consumers wanted in their games. However, they draw the line when it comes to people pirating their game, and so they created a rather awkward, yet very effective anti-piracy method. If you've played The Witcher 1 and 2, you would know that you have the chance to romance some characters. 
However, if you pirated the game, you find that instead of romancing a pretty woman, the game would detect that you were running a pirated version of the game and would change the beautiful woman into a very ugly old woman model. Dirt Showdown the developers of Dirt Showdown made sure that if the player has pirated their game, they would know about it outright. For example, the game substitutes random in-game words with pirate. Gamers who wanted to pirate the showdown debated whether it was worth getting humiliated on the track by a computer named Yara Vast. Operation Stealth Players who pirated their game had a tough time getting through the start screen. When you booted up the game, you expected the game to greet you with the titles, except it didn't. The game greeted the gamer with a very weird abstract art. To make it even more complicated, the picture was divided up into a palette of colorful patterns, and presented on the back page of the game manual as a reference point. When the copy protection screen loaded, the picture was in grayscale except one puzzle piece. The game then asked you to identify which one, and the best part was that it only gave you two tries. Star Tropics Players who played a pirated copy would get stuck with this puzzle with a very vague clue. Tell Mike to dip my letter in water. Now you may search for this letter for days and not find it, because the letter is an actual physical letter that comes with the game. And of course people who pirated the game did not get this physical piece of paper. However people who did buy the game also had a harrowing time as they have to expose it to water to reveal a secret password, which meant that you had to apply the exact amount of water needed. Add too little and the code wouldn't be readable. Add too much and the paper would become unusable. Earthbound. Despite being an old game, Earthbound had one of the most amazing anti-piracy measures I've ever seen in a video game. Don't believe me? Well how's this? For starters, those who pirated the game would experience enemy encounters that would become eerily more frequent, which made it a drag. And if you still managed to make it to the end, the game would freeze and your save file would be deleted, which would make you want to throw the monitor out of the window. Operation Flashpoint Operation Flashpoint had a very simple method of dealing with people who pirated their game. As pirates keep playing the game, the weapons become less accurate and less powerful, which meant more deaths and no progression. However, that's not all. The amount of damage taken by the players also increases. Grand Theft Auto 4 It comes as no surprise that Grand Theft Auto 4 was quite popular in its day, and every gamer wanted to get their hands on it. Of course that meant going so far as to pirate the hell out of the game, so of course the developers were prepared for this and had a nice surprise for those who wanted to pirate the game. As the game goes on to explain how the safe house feature works, suddenly without explanation the camera starts to shake hysterically, and keep in mind that it will do this forever. However that's not all as any car Nico entered would automatically accelerate and instantly start smoking. And that wraps it up. What are your thoughts about this? Let us know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, please like and share it on Twitter and Facebook. And why not consider subscribing? We upload some really cool videos almost every day. Thank you for watching this video, and happy gaming!